Nestled in the green-blue vastness of rural England lies a borderland. A land which provides sanctuary to human and animal. A land with a prehistoric heart and a young spirit. A land where industry and nature coexist side by side, hedge by hedge, path by path. Oil through water, rust through rock, industry through nature, winter through spring. This is a story of earth and water. We begin at winter's end. Spring is on the horizon and has been waiting impetuously. The landscape has been rendered seemingly desolate by the unforgiving English climate. Lakes are glazed over with a silver pane of ice and frost. The trees braced, still in the hardening chill. The birds and animals endure the weather and forage what they can. Machines holler in the distance, perpetually shaping and reshaping this land. Food has been scarce throughout the winter months, forcing many animals to hibernate or seek warmer climates. Found on a borderland between the English counties of Gloucestershire and Wiltshire, the Cotswold Water Park spans over 40 square miles of land and is home to over 155 lakes and counting. It's a consistently evolving piece of land due to its unique method of expansion. The park shares an intrinsic relationship with the mining industry. Its ripped cavities and chasms lay in the foundations for new life. Without industry, this tapestry of wetlands would not exist. Peter Andrew is the group director of Hills Quarry Products. Hills is a family business that has a deep history of quarrying in the Cotswold Water Park, going back some 120 years. Here at Shawncut Quarry in the Cotswold Water Park, 300,000 tonnes of mineral are extracted here every year. Aggregate is a, a range of products that are produced from working uh, rock, sand and gravel that are naturally occurring within the, uh, the, the ground formation. It's a fundamental uh, product for, for everything that we do and need today. Um, roads, houses, schools, factories, toothpaste, tarmac, glass, house building, concrete. Agri is, is in nearly everything that we use as part of today's way of life. The nature of the way modern mineral extraction works is to remove the mineral and then create something afterwards. So compared with many other heavy industries, it, it, it's providing a benefit. It's all about the legacy. So very often the areas we work might be very poor agricultural land, and where we create something that's good for nature in the local area. As winter gives way to spring, 
the animals become more active and take advantage of the mild weather. One of the animals making the most of this seasonal change is the great crested grebe. Typically found on lakes and reservoirs, great crested grebes are water birds that feed on the fish and insect found in these lakes. Renowned for their dazzling ornamental plumage, the great crested grebe is a common sight on restored gravel sites throughout the UK. The breeding season is upon us, and this grebe is on the lookout for a mate. Courtship for a great crested grebe is particularly important. And the search for the right partner, for whom they click with, it's imperative. Looks like he's spotted someone. The courtship routine is elaborate. The ability to read the suitor's body language is key. Head shaking is customary and alerts the other to their intentions. The next stage is an imitation game. The grebes will swim in parallel and copy each other's subtle movements. They do say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Finally, when all is agreed, to cement their bonds, the grebes will dive down once more, return to the surface, make a beeline for one another and rise out of the water, thrusting themselves up in parallel, striking an elaborate pose. Let's, let's leave these two to it, shall we? Part of the reason the grebes continue to flourish here is the constant ecosystem management. Led by Ben Wellborn, Biodiversity and Estates Manager at the Cotswold Water Park Trust. The Cotswold Water Park Trust is a charitable organisation that manages a number of sites within the park. The Cotswold Water Park is reasonably unique in, in so far as it's uh, essentially a man-made wetland landscape. The Cotswold Water Park roughly follows the line of the Upper Thames Corridor, so you've got a, a big network of rivers and tributaries, which is why it's, it's so important alongside the, the obvious Stillwater Lakes. When the quarries are in their active extraction phase, there is a bit of a misconception that actually they're, they're no good for, for wildlife, those sites, but actually they're really important. So some of the species we get in the water park are unique to active quarry sites, such as the sand martin that will excavate nest holes in the faces of active quarries and successfully breed there where they, they wouldn't be able to if that quarry wasn't there. So it's really key that there are continuing uh, gravel reserves being worked out here for several species. mineral industry has come a long way since its harsh beginnings and has continued to develop and reform its practices. The, uh, the mineral industry has transformed over the last hundred years really from sort of a pick and axe operation 
uh, in small quarries producing uh, stone for roads and tracks and farm buildings. It's moved on considerably. In the water park, we work the mineral dry. That means we uh, excavate into the mineral, uh, create a pumping point, work that mineral dry to so remove all the groundwater, dig the mineral and process it. This reduces the wastage. If you go back sort of 50 years, all of that mineral probably would have been worked wet. So in decades gone by, the mineral companies would have tried to extract every last bit of gravel out of the ground that they had the permission to dig on. And that would have meant digging right up to the field boundaries and hedgerows, leaving a very steep-sided rectangular pit that just filled with water and became a fairly dull lake, ecologically speaking. As knowledge and technology has advanced, uh, things are done slightly differently. There's more recognition that actually we can do better with restoration. So minerals companies are a lot better now for this kind of landscape in the UK. In this environment, industry and the demand for aggregate has been a catalyst for change, breathing life back into the landscape. The Cotswold Water Park is still quite a young landscape and at current mineral extraction rates, there's at least another 50 years worth of mineral extraction to go. We're currently up to 150, 160 lakes. That could top 300 lakes by the time all is done and dusted, at which point it's set to become the largest inland wetland in Europe. The Cotswold Water Park Trust have been a strong partner. They've, they've worked with us. Uh, we've worked with them to create the wonderful environment that, that you see around you. This, this environment has been created by quarrying. It wasn't here before. And it's a fantastic legacy for the industry. And it's something for the Cotswold Water Park Trust to be incredibly proud of. The industry here in the water park initially takes from the environment. Some might say an investment into the future. But what's delivered at the end of its life cycle is such a healthy return investment in the form of richer biodiversity, greater public access, increased aggregate production, and new, more varied habitats. But the initial loss is compensated with a dramatic gain for wildlife. It's a symbiotic relationship. It's a relationship where we are trying to create something that benefits the community and nature as a whole.